Hello, um, Jason asked me to do a little explanation video for the Minera project that I did. Um, before I do, I would just want to say thank you very much, Jason. Very generous offer um, of the website access. Um, I also want to say um, that it's definitely not a composition. I very much improvised it um, and treated his, uh, his context as like a, a super deadline kind of thing. It was like whoever does this first. So I was pretty much racing, which is not really a good way to compose. So it's very much improvised. A um, uh, couple other details. I'm capoed at the second fret and I have a seven string guitar with a low B extra string here. So basically, um, my, my roadmap here, all I did was write out some of his chords based on uh, what he wrote online there. If you can see that, it's just basically a bunch of chords. Um, and over the course of a few takes of trying to get something that I could live with, um, I stumbled on a few themes and things that I knew I wanted to use. So here's, they are, here's where they are. Um, I basically started out in E major using chords from E major. I did C sharp minor, B. A um, to the A flat or G sharp, same thing. Um, Minera chord, pretty much like a Phrygian cadence kind of a thing. Um, I started with a little melodic snippet. Um, C sharp minor nine. There's like a B chord with some kind of pretty notes in there. Um, an A chord with a ninth. And then uh, this little melodic thing. Um, I repeated that so that it kind of sounded thematic and more like a composition, but also as a way to introduce the low notes of the seven string guitar. So I did the same melody. I played a low C sharp. Little trick for like a B chord, um, an A chord, and then a different voicing of the Mineta chord. Um, then I think the next thing on the things to do was the uh, the A pedal business. Um, I ended up settling with this kind of a thing. Um, Jason said to include a little bit of the G sharp, excuse me, the D sharp note, and I did that by taking this chord here, which is B, E, E, two E's, and I lowered one of the E's to the D sharp, so that I had a little bit of that crunch going on in there sort of drop that D sharp to a C sharp note. So I basically in my mind I was playing with a fancy A chord and then basically went to an E major 7 chord. D sharp, E, G sharp. And then drop that note to a C sharp. Uh, basically repeated it again. That business. Went over here to an A major 7 with a sharp 11. Um, I guess this would be a straight A major 7. And I used the sharp 11, that D-sharp note. Um, and this was really just kind of um, exploring some different sounds. I knew that I needed to set up the A7, uh, the A7 flat 5 chord, which the first thing I did was just to work it out as such, where I did... Um, this was in my preparations. And I, it just sounded too much like a Vicente Amigo thing I had heard, so I tried to come up with something different. And I sort of stumbled on this idea. Sounds like someone else anyway, but um, basically I've got a G sharp note here with my A in the bass, and there's my G natural note. Um, on the other string, I had an E that I lowered to the D sharp note, so there's the flat fifth, um, and then I lowered it to the third. So this right here is basically just a A7 chord. Uh, resolve that to the Minetta chord. Uh, the next on the list was to incorporate the A minor 6 chord. So I went back to this material. Um, I wanted to sort of set up that A minor 6 chord where I, basically when I went to this A Lydian chord again, I actually introduced a D bass note, which kind of is funky sounding because it creates uh, this interval here, a minor ninth. Um, and the reason for the D bass note was um, I kind of consider an A minor 6 and a D7 to pretty much be the same chord. Um, so in playing an A minor 6, which is this 4 minor chord, 
Uh, I also had the D7 notes available to me. Uh, and this was, oops, I'm sorry, here we go. That was the voicing I used. I used an F sharp, G natural, C, uh, um, F sharp on top. So that's my A minor 6, um, D7, what have you. Uh, then let's see, what else? Um, there was maybe some picado, some improvised stuff in there. Again, um, sort of hitting on the C note um, that I sort of used throughout in different ways um, to sort of reference the minero chord. Um, and also, you know, it's the note in the minor chord. The A minor 6 chord would be spelled A, C, E, uh, F sharp. Um, so the C note was kind of cool to use there. Um, see uh, what happened there um, then I think I did some more um, I, I eventually I got myself to this minero chord and then basically did my A flat to an A to basically a B7 kind of a chord B A F sharp B D sharp um, and that got me into the E major tonality and then I just play some Alegria stuff, some falsettas and ideas that I kind of cop from Antonio Ray, um, uh, Vicente, whomever, um, and basically played around in uh, E major, um, eventually getting to this kind of falsetta kind of thing, where I had heard a lot of falsettas that I liked that were kind of like, excuse me, this kind of thing. Um, uh, for Alegrias, and it dawned on me again, but sort of by accident, that because of the low uh, B string, that I had this kind of sound. So, um, did some of the things that I, I've seen Jason show me, uh, which is basically if that's my E major, and that's the fifth of the chord, I can raise the fifth of the chord. Incidentally, it gets to that C note again, so sort of using the C note as in different contexts. Um, at some point, maybe I raised it up. These are just different things for, for Alegrias. When I did this thing on the B, I did the same business where I raised the fifth. Um, and in the course of doing that, in some of the runs, I started sort of introducing this G natural note. For example, on, on like a B7 or something like that. Um, because basically I knew I was going to go to the Granainas key, the E minor key, again because of the assignment and also because it sounds good. Um, and that, that note is the key note uh, that differentiates E major versus E minor. The G sharp from E major becomes the G natural in E minor. So I was actually using that G natural note in ways, um, in, in other ways, so that when I went to minor it didn't feel like it was completely out of context and out of the blue. Um, so eventually, after playing um, some material in, uh, in Alegrias, I sort of set up um, by way of some kind of C chord to B chord business, um, the E minor tonality. Um, the picado was um, I, simple, improvised. Um, if I really composed it, I would have written something more intelligent than just... playing around with um, tenths, I suppose, um, and using the open string, um, incorporating a little bit of the C note, again with the C, um, playing some, some sort of A minor 7 C sounds, really just setting up a C to B to E um, cadence. Uh, getting back to the E major, I knew I wanted to do something that was... Um, was a little bit slicker than just plunk playing an E major. So I used this kind of a pivot chord, which is like an E major seven with a sharp fifth. Um, and to my ear, this, the sharp fifth note, which is again, the C natural note, um, sort of ties together a little bit of the minor and the major tonality. And then I basically took it from the C up to the C sharp on that same chord, E major, raised fifth to the E major six chord. Um, then I was back in E major um, and just kind of played around a little bit. Um, I think 
last on the checklist um, was Jason's um, mention of using uh, a resolution to A flat minor instead of the A flat minor chord. And then I think he had said use a G minor and then basically an F sharp minor with a G. Um, in my mind, the F sharp minor with a G, F sharp minor and A major are very similar. Um, so I kind of used it more like an A chord with a G in the bass. Um, but I, um, I failed to take advantage of something that he had said. He had said that you can take an A7 flat 5 and resolve that to the A flat minor. And to me that sounds good. I didn't use the A7 flat 9. I think I used like a, the A major 9, something like that. Um, not really happy with the way it came out, but again, just kind of improvised it, took a chance. Eh, didn't work out that great. Um, and so I basically just did this chromatic thing because I didn't really have anything better to do. I just failed to understand what would have been better. And it went A flat minor, G minor, to this A7 with G in the bass. Um, I did a Azapua to try to finish it. My picado chops were just not happening um, to the whole thing. They weren't really popping. They weren't crisp. That needs a lot of work. Um, felt a little more confident with the Azapua. Although that needs work too, but one thing that I really should have done is I played a um, an uh, F sharp minor and started my Azopua with a with a G sharp, basically making an F sharp minor nine. I should have done it with a G natural, and that would have been more in the sound, something like that. Um, and I probably should have just done a nice Azopua. I should have worked it out. Um, and just resolved it, you know, to the um, final Mineta chord. Um, I think in the moment it didn't really happen the way I wanted, so I went into sort of fix-it mode, tried some other means of resolving, which I think was just to play that B chord to the A chord and resolve on the other Mineta voicing. Um, but again, you know, I was just having fun with it. Um, and I am not really considering this a composition, but I, hopefully it will become one. So thank you very much, Jason. So basically, um, my, my roadmap here, all I did was write out some of his chords based on uh, what he wrote online there. If you can see that, it's just basically a bunch of chords. Um, and over the course of a pretty much racing, which is not really a good way to compose. So it's very much improvised. Um, a uh, couple other details, I'm capoed at the 2nd fret, and I have a 7 string guitar with a low B extra string here. So a few takes of trying to get something that I could live with. Um, I stumbled on a few themes and things that I knew I wanted to use. So here's, they are, here's where they are. Um, I basically started out in E major using chords from E major. I did C sharp minor. I also want to say um, that it's definitely not a composition. I very much improvised it. Um, and treated his uh, his context as like a, a super deadline kind of thing. It was like whoever does this first. So I was, hello, um, Jason asked me to do a little explanation video for the Mineta project that I did. Um, before I do, I would just want to say thank you very much, Jason. Very generous offer um, of the website access. Um, 